Magnetic mask versus magic mask. Which one does a better job at rotoscoping? This is the Final Cut versus Resolve Showdown. I'm using these AI tools all the time to help cut people out. And after literal years of rotoscoping people and objects, I love that these tools are now present in every app that I use. Even when they aren't perfect, they get about 90% of the way there and it's just a bit of finessing to bring it home all the way. This is where AI is supposed to help artists and I love it. For this test, I've set up common test shots I've had to do in the past to see where each program falls and where they need improvement. The kinds of clips that I would need to do rotoscoping or to at least isolate, be it for color correction, effects, whatever. So let's do the first one. Let's select the clip in Final Cut, go to the magic wand and add magnetic mask. And I'm just gonna click on the face. It gets most of them. I'm just gonna keep adding and then just remove the parts that I don't want. So once that's good to go, you click analyze and this is real time. So it's actually pretty fast which I like. And these are all 4K clips and you hit done and it's done. So let's go over to DaVinci Resolve and see what we see there. We're gonna do the same thing, but here it's a little bit, there's a few extra steps. Select the clip that you want, go to the color page. If it's not selected for a magic mask, just click on the dropper right here. And here's a little bit different. You just have to draw it on. Press Alt or Option to remove any sections that you don't want. And once that's done, you press this button right here to analyze back and forth. Again, this is real time going as well. And it's doing the first half of the clip. And once it's done, if you go back to your edit page, you won't actually see anything. So you have to go back to the color page, right click in your node window and then add alpha output and then just connect that to that. There's probably a simpler way to do it, but that's the way I do it. And then when you go back, you have, you have your alpha channel. But the hair is the biggest thing that I find that lacks with these. But again, this has gotten us 90% of the way there. So even in this one, you can see that the hair, it's pretty good, but it dances around or it gives us weird stuff like this. But this is where I like what Final Cut has to offer. If you just click this little icon, it'll enable and disable your on-screen controls. And then you can actually go in and add or minus any parts that you want. And you can actually adjust the brush size. So if, you want, if I wanna get rid of some stuff up here, you can just go in. The only thing is it's it's a hard brush. So if I turn off the controls, you can see that it's created this hard brush, but I can go in and just remove sections. So I really like that. And it creates keyframes based on what you're working with. So if you find a portion that is just a bit too gnarly and or like something just pops in, you can use magnetic mask to get rid of stuff. You can do the same thing in DaVinci Resolve. You would just have to go in and create new mask, but then you have to analyze it again. Moving on to the next shot. And with this shot, this is where I kind of went like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Cause not only are we gonna be trying to cut this guy out, but he has hair, fine hair. There's a lot of motion blur. And if you notice at the end of the shot, they actually cross over him. So let's see how Final Cut handles this. So we're just gonna start at the beginning of the clip. So I'm just gonna choose a frame where the motion blur is less. Click on him. Click on everything that I need. I don't want the that part of the building. I don't want that part of the building. I don't want her arm, obviously, and her thumb and her fingers. Let's get rid of those. Okay. So once that's ready, you click analyze and let's watch it go. She reaches over and you can see that it's cutting both them out, but keeping him. Now we're just doing the beginning of the clip and I can see that the hands are going to need work, but this is real time. So that's looking good to me. So we're just gonna review it. Again, a lot of the motion blur. And if we play the clip back, you can see where it will fall apart and you'd have to go in and clean it up. But again, this is like 90% of the way there. So then you just go in and do those cleanups either manually, manually or you would try to analyze it again. Okay, and then in DaVinci Resolve, it's gonna start on a frame where it's 
in focus. I'm gonna select my frame, click on the eyedropper and just paint everything that I want. Bam. I don't want her arm and her thumb and I don't want her fingers. That feels good. And then you just press analyze and it tracks it both ways. And again, Magic Mask performing very well where it's not selecting, but it's it lost a little bit of a shirt. It's doing pretty good on the hands. But again, like there's there's things that are popping up that are gonna need adjustment. Again, just go add alpha output and just connect the dots, bam. And then when you go back to your edit, you see everything. So yeah, you see where all the problems are. And this is just on fast. So the next one we're gonna do better. So, but we're gonna do it in Final Cut first. So we'll go to Final Cut. So I just want her fully in frame. Again, go to the wand, add magnetic mask, click. It did a good job, I got most of her and then just this little bit. So I'm just gonna leave that and then click analyze. It does a really good job getting that hole as it opens up. You can see weird things that happen. But again, like this gets so close to where you need it that like you can still work really fast and get a really good, get to a really good place without having to, to worry too much. So you just click done. And again, the hair is probably one of the biggest things that is, is a giveaway. And as you can see that there's just some weirdness. And this is where you can just add, refine the feather. And you know, it looks pretty good. If you had the right color background, that's still bright. You'll be able to put stuff there very, very easily. So in DaVinci Resolve, let's do the same shot. Again, we're gonna go to a place where we can see her fully. And for this one, oh, it's already sounding better. We're gonna click plus and just draw on our hair, everything that we want. Does a pretty good job. It's gonna click analyze back and forth. And this is all real time. It's not, doesn't look like it's getting her pants. Let's see how it does with this opening over here. When it pops up. And it eventually gets it, so that's pretty good. I wanna show you that these tools work fairly well. And this is an M1 Max, Mac Studio from a couple of years ago. So depending on your system, it will maybe faster or slower. And again, just add alpha output, connect it, and then you're back to the clip. This one, it didn't handle it as well. Yeah, it's, you can definitely see because it's blending into the colors here. So it's really struggling with that. This is where you have to go in manually and really clean it up. So no amount of feathering or anything, you can maybe crank the refine edge, track it again, hope for better things, but you can see it popping in and out. So it's really struggling with this highlight here. And once you start boosting the quality levels, everything slows down. So just keep that in mind if you're working with DaVinci Resolve and this kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna speed up. So sometimes boosting the quality does not make it better. So if we play this back, it definitely handled that shoulder area better, magnetic mask. So let's move on to the next one. And this is the one that, this shot is my non-human test to see how much it can get because it's it's a messy messy shot not only is there a lot of contrast and flares and the mist from the tires but the whole shot goes very dark like you can still see it you can make it out this is one that had to be done manually when we initially had to do this shot but we're just going to start we're going to find a nice clean spot again click magnetic mask Select the car, does a pretty good job. That's good. I'm just gonna click analyze, let her rip. That's pretty good. And yep, just like I thought would happen, it loses it because there's, there's no detail. There's no clean lines. There's no order to the back half of this shot. So this is one that I would have to go in and like, I don't even know if I'd be able to 
go like, hey, try it again, because like it it loses the the entire shot. But overall, like doing this manually frame by frame takes hours. Just doing the back half of it, like I love that these tools are now in here. Okay, let's go to DaVinci Resolve and do the exact same shot. So I'm just gonna find a clip where I can see the car right there. And I'm just gonna select the car, the tires. I have to make sure I got the top of the car. I wanted to get that stuff. Okay, and you click analyze both ways. Yeah, it's holding on to it and yeah, it just becomes a, a nice little blob to where and it's gone. It's tried to keep at least a little bit. The front half looks fantastic, as always. But again, like this. This is fantastic. We'll see how it did on that top part over there. Like even getting through the mist, like these are both great tools. We're just gonna add our alpha output, boop. And we're just gonna go, we're already on better. Everything was good. And let's just play it back. And then towards the end, it just loses it, but that's okay. So thus far, it's kind of neck and neck with DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut. Okay, on to the next shot. So this one is a typical product shot. Someone's handling it, and we would just need to add the magnetic mask. I'm going to select the thing. One click does the entire object like it knows. Cuts out the fingers, and we're done. And we're just gonna click done and see how that goes. And like the fingers are clean. Like that whole thing was really, really clean. That looks really nice. Like that's a nice clean, like I can do a lot with that. So the Venture Resolve, we're gonna do the same thing. Click on the clip, go to the color page, make sure you're on Magic Mask with the eyedrop selected. With the eyedropper selected, that looks like a good selection. Hit analyze, let her rip. And add alpha, connect them, go back to the edit page, and let's watch that. Yeah, it looks like I'd have to add in a little bit more because it's it's the shadow seems to be throwing it off and it's popping in the finger. But that's okay. Like that's easily cleaned up. Like this is what these shots are made for. These are this is what these tools are designed for. So then for the last one. For the last one, we're going to grab that kayak, add magnetic mask, click on the kayak, Oops. get rid of some stuff that's underneath, but overall it looks pretty good. Click analyze. Let's see what happens. Guy walks in front. There's a section of the paddle that got removed. So we'll have to go in and manually add that back, but that's kind of it. Click done, and then we'd have to paint out the other kayak as well. But in DaVinci Resolve, let's do that same shot right there. Click Magic Mask, do a selection. This one you have to tell a little bit more what you want. That looks pretty good. Click Analyze both ways. Again, guy walks in front. We'll see how that handles that. Seems to be losing the paddle again. Add alpha output, drag, drop, and let's see this guy. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely sloppier. But again, this is maybe using faster and not better would have been the way to go. Because in Final Cut, it's definitely better. But let's let's get rid of some of this stuff. So we can go in, get the on-screen controls, just click minus, and then you just kind of move forward and you can quickly just paint out kind of like in Photoshop where it removes the selection anywhere the marquee is. Yeah, just paint that out. Let me boot. And I like how quick and easy it is. Just make the paintbrush a little bit bigger and you should be good. Yeah, I was really getting confused 
with that. And you just watch it again. And you have to go, I'd have to go back in and, and clean up all those little things. What you would, what you'd be doing with this, for instance, is then you would duplicate the clip and you would turn off magnetic mask on the bottom clip. So that was just a clean clip and keep it on, on the above clip. And then just, you can you'd be able to change the colors of say the kayak. And you wouldn't even notice some of the jankiness in the mat if you're just doing this for color correction. So it isolates it, you can color correct it to what you need it to be. And if you wanted to, you could adjust, you can deselect this black seat if, if you didn't want to change that or tint it. So it's really good with objects. So you can get very specific. If you wanted to change the tires, you can go in and start doing those kind of tricks. Now I found with magnetic mask, if I add, so I'm just gonna take this and duplicate this and say, so say I wanted to just, I can add the magnetic mask to just this and I'd have to analyze it the same way that I did it before and analyze the, the whole shot. Cool, fantastic, it's good. Does the same process. The only problem is now that it is tied. I can't copy this effect to any other clip. It's just locked to that effect. So if I wanted to put more effects on this, I can't do anything with it at this point. So hopefully in the future, you'll be able to copy that or just remove it where it just, it makes it on top of the clip and then anything below that will be affected. So that's the one drawback behind this. I think the better way to do it is to do it to the object that you want and then isolate that clip and then just add effects to it. So now I can just go in and drop the bad TV effect onto it or something more noticeable. So that way the mask is working on that and then you can just stack effects on top of that and change the color if you want to do that. So as a first step, this effect is fantastic and I hope Apple keeps developing it because it's already great out of the box. So this is what background scene remover should have been a year ago. So I'm happy that Apple has finally stepped up and did something kind of knocked it out of the park with this one. This is a great step forward, but it's on par with Magic Mask and DaVinci Resolve. So if you're using either of these, feel confident that they're going to be great. So what's the verdict? They are both great but not perfect in all cases. But that's not the point with these tools. It's to help create at the speed of thought. I find that magnetic mask is easier to use overall, though I hope that they add the option to share the magic mask with other effects so you don't have to reanalyze it every time. So for the time being, it's best to add it to the clip and add the effects to the isolated clips and not the effect. If you're a Final Cut user, you're gonna love magnetic mask. If you're a DaVinci user, you already love magic mask. I would say that they are on par working really well. I just like the magnetic mask version better as it's easier to use and it allows me to stay in Final Cut Pro a little bit longer. Now, I have to update my Final Cut Pro course to reflect all the great new features. And if you wanna get the most out of Final Cut Pro and ready to really learn it, check out Enhanced Editing, an expert guide to Final Cut Pro with over 10 hours of lessons focused on everything Final Cut Pro has to offer to help you master your craft and elevate your story. The link is in the description. As always, thanks for watching.